I don't love you, you know. Oh, no? No. I'm infatuated and besotted. Besotted? You're besotted. Oh, I don't think I like besotted. Hey, lady, I'm an orphan, and I'm rich. And when rich orphans go overboard, they always get besotted. Oh, okay. Besotted. <laughs> Leo, oh. what am I going to do about Russ? What are you going to... You, uh, you don't know yet what uh, no, you're going to... No, no, no. I mean, how am I going to explain? I've only known you four weeks. Oh, four weeks, four hours. What's the difference? I guess you... Uh... You better write him. Oh, no. No, I can't. I can't write him a letter. He's... He's coming home tonight, and I've got to go and tell him. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, where would you like to have dinner? Well, I don't care. Oh, hey, you're gonna need your strength. I mean, you've got a lot of important decisions to make. Diamonds and rubies oh. and white gold yeah. or platinum, and, mm -hmm. and that takes a lot of thought. And there's uh, the honeymoon. Um, Rome, or Barbados, London, Tahiti, Bali, Acapulco. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, maybe all of them. But you have to decide. I think, um, I think I'll decide on dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't see why you have to go all the way out to the airport. Wouldn't it be easier just to, to call him? No, would you treat someone you cared for that way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shall I pick you up? Leo, <clears throat> I don't think I want to be picked up tonight. And just how do you plan to get home? Leo, try to understand a little. I care a lot about Russ. You do keep saying that. But I do, and I hate having to do this to him. Is that crazy, not liking to hurt somebody? I don't know. I suppose he, he argues with you, tries to get you to change your mind. I know I would. Oh, don't be silly. Yeah, well, well, how am I supposed to know? Unless I see you. I will call you first thing in the morning. In the morning? Yes. Well, not tonight. No. No, no, not tonight. Tomorrow. No. Terrific. Oh, Leo. Isn't it silly for you to feel jealous of Russ? you tomorrow. Not tonight? No. Tomorrow. Good night. Good.
loud. Thank you. How are you? Come on. Two coffees, please. Well, that's, uh, that's the story. I mean, they, I'd make up my mind. They gave me a couple of weeks. And so I've been thinking about it. What about you? I've been thinking, too. <sighs> well, we don't have to talk about it tonight. I think you ought to take that job, if you want it. Does, does that mean you've changed your mind about staying here? You'd come with me to California? It means I've changed my mind. But not about that. Oh. I'm sorry, Rice. It's the guy with the tickets to all the openings, isn't it? I mean, you scarcely know him. What, it's been a month. I know. But it happened. We're gonna be married. Married? Just like that? I mean, you're not making sense. I mean... I mean what I say. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. I mean, that, that would just make it better for both of us. Can we go now? You shouldn't be so kind to me. What'd you think I was going to do, give you a hard time? I don't want this to be the end of us. I like you as well as love you. What's the bum's name? Leo Price. Come on, I'll get your cab. Leo, I told you not to come here. He just wanted to make sure you're all right. My name is Russ Emery. It's no good. Well, what's no good? I'm eating this hat. And if I have to stand here much longer, I'll need one of you guys to take me home. Okay, well, let's take a break, okay, honey? Bill, will you get us some coffee, please? <clears throat> You've got, uh, boyfriend trouble. Sort of. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me. Thank you, Billy. Eddie? Yeah? I don't. You know, you very pretty girls are all alike. I've known dozens of you. Do you know why you always have trouble with men, huh? 
Mm. Because you're all in love with yourselves. I never could understand why they had to make Narcissus a boy. Oh, Eddie. Do you know what you need? Some reckless idiot who's madly in love with you, not just your beautiful face and your yummy, yummy body. <sighs> reckless idiot. Well, he'd have to be, wouldn't he? I mean, well, it's better than even money that he's on a disaster course. Wait a minute. She says that price fellas parked the car down the street and he's waiting for right. me. Well, that looks like his car, all right. Well, call the police, Tom. Uh, all right, dear. I'll walk down and I'll meet you halfway. And if he tries anything, just let me do the talking, will you? I'm on my way. Don't be stupid, Tom. Call the police. And tell them why. The fellas parked his car down the street. Well, I'm coming with you. No, Mary. That just... Leave this to me, will you? Sheila? I wouldn't answer my call, so I'm here. I have to talk to you. You have to listen to me. I told you I never want to see you again. Oh, well, uh, that's just because you were a little upset. You didn't mean it. But you've had time to get over that now. Look, I, I, had, I admitted that I lost my head. I made a mistake. But I have apologized for that. You have to accept it. I'm not accepting anything from you. I don't seem to understand. I'm apologizing to you. I don't care what you do. Don't you understand? I don't want to see you. I don't want to hear you. It's no, finished. No, don't you say that. Don't you, don't you even and think it, because it's just not true. You'll say and think anything she likes. It's all right, dear. Okay, that's it. She's told you you're through. Now, please go away. Now, you, uh, you don't quite seem to have heard me, Mr. Blunden. Sheila and I are getting married, and you better make up your mind to that fact. Now, I, uh, I admit, I, I made a mistake. But I was only trying to protect her, and she knows that. Now, we can, we can work out this difference between us. We don't need your help at all. I won't listen to him! Go in the house, Sheila. Go in the house, dear. Daddy. Go in the house, dear. I have something to tell Mr. Price. Sheila. Now, if you won't listen to me, 
The police will. I know a little about the law. Don't, uh, don't try to stop me, old man. Now, she has to listen to me, and she will. Right now, you'd better do the listening. I don't know whether the district attorney's office really intends to go after you or not. Ten minutes ago, I wouldn't have given her a chance. But now it could be different. What's different? Ten minutes ago, you only had one strike against you. Misdemeanor assault. Now you've got assault and intimidating a witness. She, she leave <laughs> You're crazy, young man. Sheila was witness to the assault, and I was witness to the fact that you tried to intimidate her. The district attorney threw the book at you. Now, wait Keep your hands to yourself, Mr. Price. Now, I'm warning you. You stay away from Sheila, or I'll have the police pick you up. And I can do that now. If you don't believe me, you just ask your own attorney. He'll tell you. So just get out of here. They said this can come off on Monday. I guess you know why I'm here. Yeah, you still want me to press charges? Well, as I told you, Mr. Leo Price has uh, quite a record of arrests for assault. The last time, it was both a man and a woman he beat up. The woman was in the hospital for over a month with internal injuries. But you weren't able to make the charges stick. Well, he has money. He has political pull. They hired a smart lawyer. So you didn't get a conviction any more than you would now. Hey, he saw me take hold of his fiance and kiss her. I mean, he lost his temper like any red-blooded man would do. At least that's the story he gave. Oh, Lieutenant Robbins, am I interrupting something? No, uh, I was just going. Bye, Mr. Emery. Miss London. Bye. Hi. Hi. What did he want? Same old thing, our cooperation. Russ, we, we've got to forget about Leo. You forget about him. What about the new job? Hasn't worked out too badly as it happens. They wouldn't have needed me till the beginning of the month anyway. So there's no problem. Great. <laughs> this firm... I'm in electronics. Do they know about what happened? Well, they, they know that I was hospitalized with a couple of broken bones. I told them that I was in an accident. It's quite true, I was. So, so was I, in, in a way. Yeah, I guess you were. What's this place like? This place in California. Audrey? Yeah. Well, it's, um, I don't know, it's growing fast, and it's uh, got a couple of factories, Harmon's and, uh, and two or three others. Will you, um, will you take a, an, an apartment or a house? Uh, well, you see, the, the uh, company takes care of your housing until you can find a place of your own. I, I suppose an apartment to begin with. How big? Well, you see, uh, Sheila, I didn't get a chance to see the um, apartments while I was there. Russ, you always wanted to get rid of your apartment and, and, and live in a house. Is this a proposal? <sighs> yeah. I wouldn't want you to marry me because you were sorry I was beaten up. That, that wouldn't work for either of us. I, I am sorry. Oh, I really am. But that's got nothing to do with it. I don't know what happened to me. I, I went crazy for a few weeks, but I'm okay now. And I love you more than ever before. I want to... I'll go anywhere with you if you want me to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I love you. <laughs> you know what I want to do? What? I want to go out there a few days early and get us a really oh. nice house. Russ, I don't want to stay behind. Not even for a few days or whatever. I want to be with you. Well, well, well. Wait till they all hear about this in X-ray. <laughs> Hello, the Nova Model Agency. Okay, Mr. Rackle, I'll see what I can do. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, uh, you'll let me know by uh, 11, huh? Fine. Good. Bye now. Surprise, surprise. Life of my life. I was just passing by, and I thought that maybe you and that terrific husband of yours would like a pair of tickets to the music box this Saturday night. Try me. Hmm. We thought that particular font of goodwill dried up. How come it's gone again? I have a beautiful nature. You, uh, you happen to know where Sheila's working today? Sheila? You're asking me? Yes, beautiful. But I thought... What did you think? I mean, you don't know. Know what, my love? She gave up modeling. She quit. She said she was getting married. I thought you were the guy. Oh, Mrs. Blunden, I've explained about all of that. I have explained. I have apologized. My attorney tried to pay the hospital bills on my behalf. I have done everything. Surely... What did you say? I said they're married. Hello? Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh... Yes, I heard you, Mrs. Blunden. Now, you hear me. She has made a mistake, a bad, bad mistake, and it's going to have to be put right. You understand that, don't you, Mrs. Blunden? It has got to be put right. Now, you tell me how I can get in touch with her. You don't. I want her address, Mrs. Blunden. I'm not giving you their address. Why? Because she... Wait a minute, that's stage two. Got Maybe to hurry to stage two. Bell. What are you making? Well, it's an experiment. It's for dinner. Now, don't touch anything. Mmm, what's it called? Chicken casserole. It's right there in the book. Now, I've probably done everything wrong, because they don't tell you enough, and they, and they figure you know how to cook in this book. So if it's awful, we'll have to open another can of chili. I love chili. <laughs> I'm glad. How about a beer for the cook? I'll get it. Okay. Your name, Emery? Yes. We got a package for you. I'll need a signature for this. Thank you. Ah. Oh, you're heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. It's uh, from New York, addressed to both of us in your father's handwriting. Maybe it's a table linen. No, they're too heavy. I'm going to need a screwdriver. You want to see? Yeah, open it up. 
I'll be in in a minute. Make some herbs. talked about sending us a set of those beer tankards. I bet that's what it is. Russ, can't you get it open? Sheila, love Leo. And it's going right back to Leo. How did he know where to send it? It was sent care of your parents, and your father sent it on parcel post. It's going back the same way. But we can't. Well, you don't think for one minute we're going to keep it, do you? But he'll know where we live. He'll know by the return address. So what? Well, you promised. You agreed. I, that was weeks ago. That was in New York. We're 2,000 miles away now, Sheila. What could it possibly matter? I just... I don't want him to know where I live. Why, are you afraid? Who, for me? Because if so, there isn't anything I'd like better than to put that guy... No! No! I just, I, I just don't want him in any part of our lives. Not in any part, ever. Okay. Okay. Then I'll send it back to your dad and he can rewrap it and send it on. Too. You can have your revenge Friday. Paul Mary's expecting me home. Good night now. Good night, Tom. Good night, Wally. Good night, Mr. Blunden. Paul Payne. Sure, Mr. Blunden. I'll see you Friday. Please. Uh, soda with that or water? No, just straight. I thought I might see Tom Blunden around here. You a friend of Tom's? Oh, hey, sure. My old man and him used to be big buddies. Well, you just missed him. He left a couple of minutes ago. I wanted to see him, too. Well, he just went off to his supper. You know, he lives down the block. Yeah, yeah. I haven't got time to visit him right now. Hey, uh, maybe you could do me a favor. Sure. Look, I, uh... I wanted to give this to him, but I don't know, maybe it's better this way. The Mets? Mm-hmm. Last night came with the season. I bought the ticket a couple of months ago, and now I can't use it. Could you uh, give it to him? Sure. Who will I say left it? Well, uh, like I said, maybe it's better this way. You know, if, if I give the ticket to Tom, he's just going to want to pay me for it. You know how he is. Sure. Well, why don't you just tell him that a customer gave it to you, you can't get away that night, okay? Tom will get a boot out of this. Yeah, I thought so, too. <laughs> just, uh... Don't say who gave it to you, huh? That's easy. I don't know. <laughs> Let's go.
Mr. Blunden. Hey, this is a surprise. Karen, I'd like you to meet Mr. Blunden. Mr. Blunden, my fiance, Karen Roche. How do you do, Mr. Blunden? I'm glad to know you, Miss Roche. You said your fiance? Mm hmm. We're getting married next week. Gonna go to Europe for our honeymoon. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of sudden, wasn't it? Oh, I've been trying to pin him down for years, Mr. Blunden. I was the girl next door. I see. How's, uh, how's Sheila? Sheila's very well. Sheila and Ross are both very well. Good. Did they, uh, did they get the wedding present I sent them? The silverware, you did send it to them, didn't you? Certainly I sent it on. Didn't you get it back? Uh, I just wanted them to know that there were no hard feelings, Mr. Bundy. Okay. Uh, I know about Sheila, of course. Leo told me. I'd like to meet her after we're married. Well, I don't think there'll be much chance for that, you know. We'll be in Europe and Sheila and Rust are out in California. Mr. Blunden? Yeah. I heard California. Anything else? A small town near Bakersfield. It's a brand new place, he said. Oh. That should be pretty easy. A girl next door. I nearly threw up. Would you mind telling me now what this is all about? I told you, it's just a joke. Well, I hope it's funny. He seems a nice old guy. All my jokes are funny. Let's see, that's $150, the going rate, right? Plus 50, that's a bonus for getting the script right, plus cab fare. That's it? Evening over? That's it. You can make it back to your own bed early tonight, see you. Anytime. I told him was that you were in California. Goodness gracious, California's a pretty big state, dear. <laughs> I only tried to tell this girl as tactfully as I could that I didn't think you'd want to meet her. I don't see that. That's that's all right, Daddy. I, yeah, no, <laughs> it's okay. Um, d uh, d Daddy, I have to go now. Uh, n no, t tell tell Mom goodbye, okay? Okay, bye bye. Aren't you ready? I will be in, in, in three minutes. Uh, I'm going to take a shower, and I've got your stuff laid out already, all right? Don't worry.
pretty sweet smelling trash can we have out there. They came this afternoon. Leo Price, why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to spoil the evening. That's good thinking. I put them in the trash can. What else could I do? Any note with them? No. I called the, the store that sent them, and, and they told me that it was delivered, telegraph delivery from New York. To this address? Yes, he's found out. I called my father. He says that he met Leo accidentally at a ball game. That this girl that he was with wanted to know about me. What girl? Some girl. My father says that this girl and Leo are going to be married next week. Married? Hmm. You know something? You send flowers to another man's wife? You know what I think? Yes, I know what you think. That he made a fool out of my father. That it couldn't have been accidental that Leo's never been to a ball game in his life. That he just wanted my address. So knowing this, you don't tell me. Well, what difference would it make? You keep telling me to forget about him. I'm trying to. But he won't let me. You won't let me. The point is, Colonel, if both elements of this system are matched before they leave the factory. Now, if one side should develop a malfunction, I think we should have them both back for a checkup. But these elements are supposed to be interchangeable. Oh, Russ. Excuse me. Hello. Well, how can you be sure? Did you see him? Well, then... Listen, baby, I can't talk right now. It's lunch in about 20 minutes. I'll pick you up, all right? Yeah, 20, 25 minutes, okay? Okay. Yeah, okay, I'll be there. Go on. It's over there. Where? Right, right there. What was it? Right there, beside the green car. <sighs> well, it's gone now. Well, I'm sure it was his car. I it was his car. All right, supposing it was his car. Supposing he is here. We know him. He can't do anything to us. Look, Russ, there's no need to drive me home. Um, I know you pushed for time. Well, I... I mean, I, I feel like walking. Just let me out right here, okay? You sure? Yeah. I'm positive. Okay. Hey, I'll be... I'll be home early, all right? Yes.
us, is that you? Sheila, are you there? I got someone here I want you to meet. Oh? Your new bodyguard. Oh, Russ! Oh, Russ, is she really ours? Yeah. Oh, what's her name? Samantha. Oh. Sam for short. Sam. Oh, Russ. Hadn't we better, um... Oh, no, so she's housebroken. Oh, Russ, what a wonderful present. Hey, you know, Sam, she's only a puppy now. She's gonna be twice that size. Um, um, I'm sorry for being such a stupid, neurotic wife. Yeah. Well, I've had a lot of time on my hands. That's the problem. Oh, I just, I love her. I'll tell you what, I'll go get her chat. Okay. Sam, Sam, hello, sweetheart. Hello, baby. Hi, Hi sweetheart. <laughs> now you see? Yeah. The whole set's gonna have to come down, isn't it? Well, it'll take a couple hours. Yeah. Uh, why don't you get started? I'm gonna make a call. I'm gonna be a little late. No, no, just about an hour or so. I'll tell you what, I'll take you to dinner. Get dressed, huh? Okay. Do you want me to make a reservation? No, no, that's all right. Okay. Would you hurry? Okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay, let's go for a walk. Samantha. Let's go. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. Let me mail this letter. Sam? 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 Hello, my love. It's me. Please. Please. Don't be frightened. I'm perfectly harmless. What are you doing here? Seeing you, of course. My, uh, my spies tell me that Thursday is your day for mailing letters, so uh, here I am. Hey. Hello. Sam. Sam, huh? Hello, Sam. <laughs> All those days that I, uh, that I didn't know where you were. All those other days that I spent trying to find you. All I had were your photos. They never looked as good as... as you do yourself. I'm going home. No, wait a minute, please. Please, listen. It's... it's very important for both of us. Isn't there, uh, isn't there some place where we can go and talk? No. <laughs> Sheila, don't you, uh, don't you think I've been punished enough, huh? What do you want here? Why can't you just leave me alone? All I want is what we both want, everything back the way it was. Oh, that's the last thing I want. You see? You see, you're still... T you're still punishing me! Can't you understand? Leo, I'm married. 
Yes, you... Well, of course, that's, that's one of the things that, that we have to talk about. Hey, but you don't, you don't have to worry. It's all arranged. Now, all you have to do is spend a few weeks in Mexico. The divorce is, is practically automatic. We can drive down there together. Yeah, that's, that's why I have my car brought out. You see, I, I wouldn't want you driving in a, in a strange car. Every, everything has to be exactly the way it was. But it isn't. It can't be. Now, Sheila, we... We both of us made mistakes. I've, 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 I've suffered for mine. I'm not asking you to suffer for yours. I love you too much for that. I only ask that you put it right. Now, I've done everything I can. I, I've made it as easy as I can. Now, you have to do your part, and then nobody gets hurt. Hurt? Wait. I am, uh, I am being very patient. I am. Uh, Look, I, I, I know that if I put up my paws and beg nicely, you would get in that car and leave with me right now, but I don't want that. Now, you... You have until tomorrow. You see, it has to be your decision, made of your own free will. And then I'll be sure that I can trust you and, and believe in you again. The move has to come from you. Now, you understand that? You do, don't you? <laughs> That's it. All you have to do when you're ready is, is to call my answering service in New York. And they'll pass the message along here, and you leave the rest to me. Hey. Do you remember the number? Hmm? Yes. Of course. <laughs> That's nice. Come on. Don't, uh... Don't be too long, my love. What's the matter? What's happened? What time is it? It's about, uh, it's about 8.30. I'm sorry we were held up. I better get dressed. I better... Hey, hey, never mind that. What happened? What's going on? I went to mail my letter. And he was there. He? You mean, you mean Price? Yes. He... What happened? Nothing. I'm all right. It's all right. It's all right. I checked all the hotels and motels in the area. He's, he's not registered, at least not under his own name. About the sports car, Mrs. Emery, you didn't get the number, I suppose. 
Well, it, it has New York plates. It's a pretty distinctive car, Sheriff. Mrs. Emery, when he was talking to you, did he try to take hold of you or anything like that? I mean, technically, that could be an assault. No. Did he threaten you physically in any way? Hey, the fact that he's here is a threat in itself. I mean, this guy's a psycho, Sheriff. You've got to pick him up. He's done nothing in California, Mr. Emery, and until he does, I... That's great. The police do nothing. What do I do, then? Buy a shotgun and stay home? Oh, uh, wait just a minute. If it's not safe in this town for my wife to go and mail a letter... I said wait a minute. I will tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to warn the prowl car boys to be on the lookout for this foreign job with the New York plates. And if they see him, they can tell him he's under observation. And maybe lean on him a bit. He'll get the message soon enough. Sheriff, I know you're trying to help, but you're... You're not going to scare this guy off by asking to see his driver's license. Hey, you'd be surprised what we can do, Mr. Emery. I'll let you worry, ma'am. If you have any more trouble with this character, you just call us right away, and we'll give you immediate police protection. Yeah. <laughs> Any time, day or night. Okay, folks? Sign of him or his car. Any ideas apart from that one? Would you like something to eat? I've got to find out where he's staying. Why? What difference does it make? What? We we can't stay here. He knows where we are now. We've got to go. We've got to leave and, and, and go somewhere where he can't find us. Are you out of your mind? No. Look, don't you see, Russ? He knows where we are now. He'll be around. We, we'll be afraid. We? No. Me. I'll be afraid. Russ, please. I won't be able to... to walk out the front door without looking for his car. I won't be able to listen to the doorbell or hear the phone ring without thinking it's him. I, I won't be able to even go to the marketplace without looking for him and... And, and watching for him. We have to go. We have... We just have to go. Go where? Anywhere. What you're really saying is that I can't protect you, right? That's not what I mean. Oh, sure it is. Because, you see, I took a beating from this guy in New York. And I guess you did, too, in a way. But the difference is that I got over mine and you didn't. No. Oh, yes. You don't kid yourself. It's obvious enough. See, I thought that all we needed was a little happiness and some time to make everything okay. Well, we got the happiness. At least, I thought we did. But we didn't get the time. God, I didn't bring this guy into our lives, but I'm going to get him out of mine. And if you don't want to help, you can just go back to New York to your folks or to him. If that's the way it's going to be. That's not what I want. You know, it's really funny because sometimes people run because they want to get caught. I mean, I mean, he caught you once before, didn't he? You almost married him, remember? You sure you don't want to get caught again? How can you say that? Maybe you don't want either one of us. Maybe you'd just as soon go back to modeling. Maybe, maybe that's the life for you. But is that, that's not important now. Not important? No, not important now. It's not important. You're either with me or you're not with me. Now, if you are, 
This is it, baby. This is it. We stay here. This is the end of the retreat. It's as simple as that. I told you. I never want to see him again. Okay, prove it. How? By doing what he told you to do. What do you mean? He told you to call his service, didn't he? Okay, if you want to call it. Tell him you want to meet him. Tonight. Do what I tell you, Sheila. Call him. Where is she? Where's Sheila? She asked me to give you a message. Oh? The message is she doesn't want to see you or hear from you again. Lying. No, I just... I just talked to her and you're lying, lying! <clears throat> lying! Lying! <clears throat> See, I know you talked. We had to find out where to deliver the message, and I wanted to make sure you got all the message. You were spying on her. You see, you don't seem to be getting the idea, man. She doesn't want to have anything to do with you. You stay away from me, and you stay away from my wife. Russ, are you all right? Yeah. Feeling sorry for him? A little. So? Some of the things you said tonight made me think. They were meant to. I think it would be better for you if I went back to New York. Eddie said... Who's Eddie? Uh, he's my photographer. He said that... Um, any man who marries a girl like me is... headed on a disaster course. Oh, good for Eddie. Why don't you just get the hell out and go back to New York? Just don't go tonight. He's heading east. He would have taken the main highway. Well, he's 
going to Audrey. Hmm. Uh, there's a sheriff's car back there at the station. You want to stop and talk to the uh, man? All that explaining. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll stop at the sheriff's station in town. I mean, just in case Leo's out to make any trouble. What do you think he could do? Maybe he just thought of something he forgot to say. We're still in it. Yeah, intentional. That wagon's empty, isn't it? Yeah, he tried to run us down when we got out of it. Look, you can see the tracks. Right. You two wait by my car. All right, mister, get out of the car. says you ran them off the road on purpose. What do you say? I had to kill them, don't you see that? I, they didn't leave me anything else to do, nothing at all. All right, turn around, put your hands up on the car. Lexi wouldn't understand that. He just wouldn't understand that. No, I wouldn't. All right, let's go. Watch where you're walking. You just wait here.
829, this is unit 17. Oh, you. What are you staring at? Who are they? They're the people you said you had to kill. Hey, what is your name? Price. Leo Price. I killed a girl named Sheila Blunden, a man named Emery. My name is Emery, officer. This is my wife, Sheila. Need some help along in a minute. Why don't you wait in the car? Very pretty, Mrs. O. Oh, whatever your name is. But you're not Sheila.